Today we will talk about Siliguri Corridor. The thin chicken snack is a territory connecting the seven Indian northeastern states to West Bengal and the rest of India is also called Siliguri Corridor. The Siliguri Corridor is a cartographic relic of the British decolonization process is a terrifyingly vulnerable artery in India's geography. This piece of land is about 60 kilometers in length but a mere 21 km in width at its narrowest point. With plain terrain not interspersed with any natural or man-made obstacles, this patch makes defense a real challenge. Why is it precarious? The Siliguri Corridor is indeed in a precarious position. It's precarious uh, largely because of many reasons. Uh, it is uh, the, in the northern part of West Bengal, this is a corridor that acts as a gateway to northeastern Sikkim, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh uh, and has been confronting a lot of security challenges. Uh. Some recent developments both inside and in the neighboring countries uh, could have far-reaching implications uh, for the sensitive border region. There are many threats that the region goes on to receiving uh, that goes on to be suffering from and there are some natural disadvantages uh, of this region. One of them is uh, a threat that is a threat emanating from various sources including geographical constraints, China's upgradation of infrastructure in Tibet uh, and its growing assertiveness uh, in the region. Illegal immigration from Bangladesh, cross-border terrorism and Islamic radicalization in Bangladesh, possible spillover effects of insurgency and ethnic conflicts in Northeast, especially bordering Assam and transnational crimes. All of these factors deserve particular attention because of the gravity of the present situation and the impact of these type of situations on the national security. The territorial integrity of India as well, peace of the country as well and political stability and economic development of it as well. Act East policy also goes on to get affected and sub-regional cooperation in South Asia is uh, going to be one of these uh, pitfalls uh, of uh, this region not being able to stabilize itself. Second is uh, all land trade between Northeast India's 40 million citizens, we call it denizens, and the rest of the country traverses the Siliguri owing to the lack of a free trade agreement between India and Bangladesh. Of course, India and Bangladesh, both of them happen to be coming close to it, and both of these countries are working towards it. It depends on Indian diplomacy to what extent India is able to garner support from Bangladesh and to what extent Bangladesh goes on to cooperate with India as well. The third is further reinforcing the strategic precariousness of the region is the fact that there is only one railway line that carries rail based freight across Suliguri. Fourth is the topography of the region is essentially confined, constrained with hill regions not too high hills but hill regions eh, confining eh, the entire of the plane track eh. and sometimes there are two possible damages to it eh. one of them is going to be through rainfall and the second is going to be through the landslides eh, that can go on to fill the whole of this place eh. northeastern region of india is going to be known for a very high amount of rainfall in general in this place eh. and this record breaking rainfall can go on to have far reaching implications eh, as far as the connectivity and providing connectivity from one region to another region is concerned. Fifth is the corridor has a complex eh, and a troubled political history. The situation has eh, somewhat improved since the pre-1971 era when a eh, cold relationship with China in the north and east Pakistan meant that the region was a constant source of cross-border tension. Since 1962 war with China, Indian strategists have envisioned a future scenario where the Chinese may simply bypass and drop special forces to choke the vulnerable Siliguri corridor and cut off the northeast. Now this is what exactly is also the strategy of the Muslim separatists in the country. China's diplomacy with Bhutan gives a reason to take this type of a possibility seriously as well. Six is 
In acknowledgement of its importance to India's national security, India maintains a very heavy deployment of forces. There is a very heavy patrol presence in the Siliguri region. The Indian Army, the Assam Rifles, the Border Security Force and the West Bengal Police all patrol the region. India's research and analysis wing, popularly known as a RAW, is closely observing the Nepalese, Bhutanese and the Bangladeshi activity in the region as well and they're going to be patrolling it and they go on to be observing it, having a surveillance over it in a very close manner. And among other issues, the Siliguri has been vulnerable to illegal Bangladeshi immigrants into India. Pakistan's Inter Services Intelligence ISI has attempted to exploit Siliguri via Nepal based insurgents. Seventh is the threat to the Siliguri corridor, which of course is going to be called as the chicken neck, is perennially China has continued overt road and airstrip construction activity on its side of the border. Now, this could allow China to rapidly mobilize and deploy troops whereby threatening the Siliguri corridor. Further, the deployment of artillery, missiles and anti-aircraft weaponry could easily jeopardize India's efforts to resupply the region in times of war, especially considering that there is only single railway line through the northeast region. Now, this is another part that is being eyed by the Muslim separatists in India who are out to create a, a good number of enclaves uh, out of the territory as per the national reports in this case. Uh, and uh, this is what has been uh, the basic aim of uh, the anti steer in India which tries to separate uh, a good number of uh, such type of regions uh, particularly which are going to be precariously placed. Uh, the Siliguri Corridor is equally important in the context of the Act East policy as it provides connectivity to three eastern neighbors of India, Bangladesh, Bhutan and Nepal. Except Alipur Duar, rest of North Bengal districts such as Malda, South Dinaspur, North Dinaspur, Jalpai Guri, Darjeeling and Kuch Bihar share the international borders with Bangladesh. The districts of Alipur, Duar, Jalpaiguri and Darjeeling are contiguous to Bhutan while Darjeeling is adjacent to Nepal. The ninth factor is the Chumbi Valley is flanked on either side by Sikkim on its west and Bhutan on the east. If you take a look at the location of Chumbi Valley, you will be able to understand that better. Nepal shares a common border with Sikkim and Chinese and Indian armies are face to face along the whole of Arunachal Pradesh. And that makes it very very difficult for India to maintain its distance from China. It allows the whole of this region to be subject to threats from a Chinese region. And that was the basic aim if it was of the Doklam Cha occupation by the Chinese, somehow India was able to retrieve it and it was able to win it diplomatically. Tenth is, the geostrategic significance of the place for India is that it is able to monitor the Chinese movements in the Chumbi Valley and that goes on to give a good amount of strategic heft largely because it is through this corridor that India is able to maintain its constant vigil and supply of a, a good number of arms, ammunition say, or anything that can happen in the region, particularly in the Chumbi Valley. But uh, Siliguri Corridor does go on to face uh, a lot of uh, disadvantages with respect to China. First, one of them is that the Siliguri Corridor is area so constricted that it is amazing uh, that after the debacle at the hands of the Chinese in 1962, Indians have not developed their connectivity to the desired extent in the northeastern part of the country. China can do to India what India did to Pakistan in 1971 by delinking the former East Pakistan from West Pakistan and helping to create a, to create the sovereign independent nation state of Bangladesh. Other disadvantages that India faces in its defensive posture vis-a-vis -vis China is that many of the infrastructure projects of roads and bridges which have been initiated off late, that is, militarily initiated, have been delayed by the difficulties of the terrain, have been delayed by the inadequacy of heavy lift 
helicopters eh, to deliver civil engineering material to be, to the building sites eh. and eh, of course eh, the most important factor that is the apathy of the bureaucracy to allow it to be developed eh, and coupled with it eh, of course eh, the political uh, will to, to delay it eh, so that they can go on to take advantage of the cost and time overruns as well. Given China's growing belligerence eh, stoked in large part of the renewed eh, Tibetan eh, unrest eh, within the Tibetan Autonomous Region that is TAR and that of the Uyghur Muslims in the Xinjiang province. Eh, this region goes on to become even more significant by the very nature of its eh, geography the Siliguri corridor is indefensible with the static obstacles eh, and with fire, uh, and firepower. The Chinese tactics eh, in this region will be, be to use to, the top of the funnel that is the valley as a, as a forming a place eh, for the People's Liberation Army that is the Chinese Army preparatory for an attack on the Suligodi corridor. And eh, this is what they may have tried to do with Doklam Cha when they started building up eh, in this region. One indicator of the Chinese intention will be the strength of the battalions that are permanently posted in the funnel of the Chumbi Valley. What happened in Doklam Cha is indicative of this Chinese design to control the territory. The whole of this region goes on to be facing problems with its defense and management as well. It's not only that the Chinese are a threat, the region is a problem with respect to how is it that India can go on to manage it as well. Defending it within an internal security concept will not work against a conventional military force of the type the Chinese can deploy from the north of the Chumbi Valley, which is well supplied by a network of roads. That means Chinese have actually built a good amount of network of roads on their side and that, that has made the region pretty, pretty precarious. The fact that Bhutan lies to the east of the northern limits of the Siliguri Corridor creates a dicey situation for India. The use of Bhutanese territory for the defense of the corridor will attract Chinese punitive action against Bhutan. That is a part of it. Now, that doesn't mean that India can't go on to use the same thing. But then who wants to get into trouble and particularly so when you have India on one of its sides. To ensure Bhutan's sovereignty, territorial integrity and neutrality, India cannot do anything to jeopardize its very existence. The emerging Nepal factor is also disturbing for India given that there is talk of not allowing recruitment of Gorkhas eh, for the Indian army and if that has been the situation eh, that means eh, the relationship eh, that used to exist between India and Nepal has not been so for a good amount of time. Can China break the corridor with the help of Bangladesh? China is completely in a position to block the corridor but Chinese are not going to do that so easily. Chinese, will Chinese be willing to do that? That also goes on to become a question. And if it is that they are willing to do so, is it going to be easier for them to do so? Now the question in this case, eh, that doesn't likely, it doesn't go on to look likely at all. Doesn't. It's not that we are going to say it can't be done. Of course, eh, in politics, eh, there are hardly anything that we can go on to say it for surety and particularly international politics. Eh, but Chinese are unlikely to take this type of a risk and an adventure. One is, with the help of Bangladesh, if they try to do it, they are in a position to do so. But understand, there is no comparison between the Indian armies of India and Bangladesh. Any political military leader worth his or her salt in Bangladesh will understand and respect it, they will go to understand that Bangladesh indeed is surrounded by India from three sides and Bangladesh military is no match, absolutely no match for India. So even if they try to do it so, India can go to pulverize Bangladesh to no end. Second is, Bangladesh is also surrounded on all sides by India and such military adventurism is going to be costing them really, really dearly. China will also never go on to pursue such an aggressive portion despite uh, many of India can go on to think uh, and many of uh, the Muslim separatists in India, particularly all the sympathizers, uh, the recently emerged sympathizers uh, who 
manifested themselves in the anti-CA protest may likely to draw a design and make a plan as well on that count. China may aggressively pursue border disputes and what it perceives as border disputes is an entirely different matter. This is not a disputed land, that is Siligori corridor or chicken neck corridor is not a disputed corridor. It belongs to India and the whole of northeastern region, region goes on to belong to India and is recognized by China as part of India. It's not a border dispute where India and China go on to be having certain type of a dispute, whoever may have been responsible for creating this type of a dispute. Then, the 21st century is not one where aggressive military expansion can just happen unchecked. China understands that part. Not only China, many countries in the world go on to understand it, except a good number of Islamic separatists and Islamic terrorists, and good number of these Muslim terrorists in India as well, which go on to form a bulk of a population which they go on to be calling it as 15 crores of it by their leaders and so on. So not only will such military adventurism result in such short-term gains, of course it will be impossible to hold the northeastern region permanently for anyone. But these small gains will come with huge consequences internationally for the Chinese. It's not going to be easy that Chinese can go to attack it, take it, and particularly if it is going to be a warfare of sorts. Now imagine India is a capable country, it's a nuclear capable country, it can go on to deliver its nuclear warheads to a good number of regions in China and that will be real, real, real sorts of a military adventurism which will go on to have not only a local implication, it will go on to have a worldwide implication and the Chinese market, Chinese reputation will be completely devastated. Of course India will go on to suffer but then it's not going to be suffering alone as well. Also, such an attack cannot be contained locally. There will be war that will be spread across the Indo-Chinese border and may, uh, may even come much more widespread. China, which is more looking to stabilize its economy and particularly in the light of what we are going to be calling it as coronavirus, it must go to stabilize itself rather than actually involving in such type of an adventurism. So, Chinese, when even if they want to join hands with Bangladesh, it's not that they will go on to make it easy for the Chinese to do it so. Now, what can be solutions to this geographical riddle? So, North East India and uh, Siliguri Corridor indeed happens to be a problem for India. It's a problem because it is through a narrow corridor that India is able to hold, hold the whole of the northeastern portion of India. And that is that is the advantage eh, that eh, was taken by some of these political parties in India to make it completely destabilize, completely destabilize eh, and eh, for a good amount of a time eh, right since independence or so. They had a vested interest. Eh. But now if you go going to see it from a nationalistic perspective, eh, you will go on to find eh, that there are going to be some solutions eh, and eh, we can actually go on to work on these solutions and Indian government eh, that is the present Modi government, the BJP government is actually working on this type of a solution. Of course, it requires a nationalistic government, it requires a nationalistic will, it requires a statementship approach and so on. And good number of them happen to be followed. As you will go on to understand it, India has been responsible for making many bridges in northeastern part of the country, which can also go on to carry tanks. You will go on to imagine Bhupan Hazarika bridge is going to be one of them as well. And there are several other strategic infrastructure projects that have been planned. But for the Siliguri corridor, the widening may not going to take place, but what are the solutions if it's a problem? One of them is widening and straightening this corridor is imperative. The first option for India is to enter into a treaty with Bangladesh permitting not only transit of military equipment during times of conflict, but also civilian traffic and trade activities. This could add a layer of strategic depth in the region and alleviate, of course in some measure, concerns of the possible severance of the northeast with the mainland. That's one way. The second is a, that is a, the treaty that India can go to enter. The treaty can cover multimodal transport including road and rail and a smooth movement of freight and personnel as well. 
With the revival of Bimstech India's relationship with Bangladesh have been seen I've seen a film with seven packs on important mutual issues uh, signed uh, during uh, Sheikh Hasina's uh, visit to India some time back uh, and India and Bangladesh have already mooted a proposal to facilitate transit uh, with uh, India's landlocked uh, North East uh, and PMs of both countries have issued joint statement in this regard uh, in uh, 2016 and they are going to be carrying it as well. Third has been currently there is a joint working group which is examining the possibility of connecting uh, Mahendra Ganj in Meghalaya to Hilly in Bengal through Goraghat, Palashbadi and Gai Bandha in Bangladesh. Now this distance of about, uh, about some 100 kilometers of sorts uh, could easily be developed into an uh, elevated road rather than the road on the ground and it can, it can go to be on an elevated road and rail corridor through Bangladesh. Such a corridor if built in PPP mode that is public private participation mode uh, can result in regular tariff uh, to Bangladesh and provide a shot in the arm to trade and tourism in North East Eastern states as well. So some type of work is being done on that part. The second option is to strengthen the connectivity to the tri-junction area at Dokala so that our response as well as our surveillance capability is uh, augmented. That means to increase it uh, and go on to go to the Dokalam Cha region around that region, the Chumbi Valley, we can go on to have a smoothing of this operation. Towards this, recent reports of converting the erstwhile mule track uh, to Dokala into a black top road by the border road organization and reducing the travel time from 7 hours to 40 minutes is step in a proper direction. Then there is a third option. The third option is to make alternate transport arrangements which are safe and secure within the country itself. The development of a model modal transport corridor to Siligod itself can be undertaken by India and a part of this under initiative we can even go on to build an underground road tunnel and uh, which are less likely to be susceptible to air and artillery attack in the time of uh, any military conflict. Now this is something that the government must be mulling over, must be thinking over, must be contemplating uh, so as to take it forward. Underground tunneling is not going to be a difficult job. Underground tunneling through this vulnerable stretch although the costly can go on to give India a little more room to take uh, Hardler military operations if required. Underground expressways and high speed connectivity through this corridor will also go on to help uh, to scale up the movement of civil and military traffic in this region. This would also enhance uh, trade and tourism of the northeastern region manifold uh, during peacetime. And of course, uh, northeast India is going to be a minefield of tourism activities. Not only that, the human resources. Uh, of this region as well. With some of these measures, India can look to overcome the constraints imposed by geography and improve the position with respect to China because we are already in discounting Bangladesh. Of course, uh, for a simple region that Bangladesh is going to be no match for India as far as firepower is concerned, economy is concerned. At best, uh, what some of these countries can go on to do is that uh, they can allow some amount of terrorism activity to instill into India and bleed India in thousand, by thousand cuts, uh, as has been the policy of uh, the Muslim separatists in India, as well as uh, with Pakistan. I mean, they have joined with Pakistan and with uh, Islamic terrorists in uh, Bangladesh. This is what can go on to happen, and this is what they are working on as well. And, uh, um, you may have known that is uh, the anti-CA protest uh, has been uh, largely on this ground. It has been a camouflaged, uh, uh, camouflaged uh, protest uh, essentially with a different type of a design altogether. This is all for now. That was Siliguri Corridor for you. Thank you.